Hello and welcome back to the Drive School. Today we are going to go deeper into the grid converter and we are going to look into dimensioning of the transformer and also a little bit about dimensioning of the frequency converter. How big modules you need for a customer requested performance. We start with a battery because the battery vendor will have some voltage for its state of charge 100% and let's say this is 810 volts in this case and when it's fully depleted the state of charge is zero it's 600 volts and first check is in our product catalog how this voltage window will adapt to this drive let's say this is a, uh, FI 13 500 volts and this will fit within that window we know that 820 is the absolutely maximum and f about 550 should be the minimum so the drive itself can handle the battery on this side then the next what will be the voltage on the IGBT side and that will also determine what the transformator ratio would be. First thing, there is one thing that you absolutely don't want with a battery, which can cause a fire and destruction of a very expensive battery. And that is that uncontrolled current going into the battery from the grid. Is that possible? Yes, because Inside the frequency converter, there is blocking diodes. And these point in this direction, which means as long as the voltage is bigger on the battery, it blocks. But if the voltage on the AC side is bigger, then the current will flow into the battery and you will have uncontrolled charge of the battery. So this is important to adjust the voltage levels here so that the diode rectifier current cannot charge the battery. If we look at the frequency converter a little bit more detailed, this is how it looks. You have the IGBT side here with the AC coming from the grid and you have the capacitor for the DC link and then you have your battery. And the battery vendor told us that from 600 volt minimum to 810 volt is the operating range for this one. The frequency converter is just a standard piece of hardware, same as used for motor control. And it has got these freewheel diodes over the IGBTs. What does that mean? It means that if the voltage on the outside AC grid is bigger amplitude than the DC link voltage. The voltage will push through these diodes and into the DC link and directly into the battery. So this is uncontrolled current going to the battery. We don't want that. So it means that this voltage maximum should be lower than what the diode rectifier can supply to the DC link. What is the ratio between the voltage here and the voltage here? Well, the calculation between the, between the DC side and the AC side is like this. The voltage on the DC side, you can then have the AC voltage multiplied with the square of two and then a 10% control margin as we call it and uh, this is about 1.6 so the ratio between the DC side and the AC side should be about 1.6 the battery vendor they will have they tell us that they will have a voltage maximum 810 volts what is that on the AC side that is 810 divided by 1.6 so it means fully charged battery you could accept 
our AC voltage up to 506 volts. That would mean you could push AC 506 volts without any damage when the state of charge is 810 volts. So, what about state of charge almost 600 volts? Zero. Same calculation, 600 volt divided by 1.6. We come down to 375 volts on the input side. It means any voltage bigger than 375 will create a current uncontrolled into the battery. So we have to stay with a voltage on this side which is lower than 3 point, sorry, 375 for not having uncontrolled charge. And this will give some values for the transformer because the AC grid sits there, 690 volts, and the transformer will then create a voltage on this side and we don't want that voltage to be higher than the 375. To have some margin, maybe 350 is a good number. Now that we have calculated our transformer, we know that the drive will be working with a voltage of about 350 volts on the IGBT side. Not too bad, because when we are pushing current in this direction, there will be a voltage loss over the filters. The choke, capacitor and this transformer. Remember that the transformer have an impedance of 4%, so there will be a voltage loss here. You could have a voltage loss of about 5 to 7 percent and in a 690 volt system you will in practical see a voltage loss when you have full load of the system, a voltage loss of about 50 to 60 volts. Well, then this voltage here and the transformer ratio is not too bad because our drive can provide a quite higher voltage here and you need that to compensate for the voltage losses over your filters and trafos. If we have lost 60 volts over the filters, okay, you maybe need to give 410 volts out of your drive to compensate for the losses so that you actually hit the correct voltage on the grid. So. This ratio, 350, is not too bad. It could be a slightly higher if you want to optimize a little bit, but this is to be on the safe side. What happens when you charge the batteries? The current flow this direction and the voltage losses will be reducing the voltage into the drive. And here comes the active front end technology in handy because the frequency converter can boost the voltage by injecting reactive current into the LCL filter and manipulate the voltage to the DC link. So when the current is flowing in this direction, it is uh, Jaco Olila, fantastic active front-end technology that actually using the LCL filter boosting the voltage to make this current flowing. And if you think that this charging current is a slow trickle current, think again. In peak shaving, this current can be thousands of ampere to compensate for peak shaving on the ship grid. We are now going to take a look at the dimensioning of the drive and the transformer, how many kilovolt amperes and how big drive it should be. It can deliver 1000 amperes both for the discharge and the, dis and the charge and total capacity is about 600 kilowatt hours. Uh, how many kilowatts will that be? Um, it will be, the power will be voltage multiplied with the current and you will deliver 810 kilowatts with this battery. So it's typically a battery for a thruster on a DP class ship. How long can you supply this 810 kilowatts? Well, for the first, the voltage of 810 volt will not be 810 volt 
unless the state of charge is 100%, so the voltage will drop off. But in theory, you could have 45 minutes of 810 kilowatts when the voltage drop off with the state of charge less. So we are talking about something close to a half an hour with this power. Calculating the size of this 500 volt drive. Uh, frequency converters are sold by the amperes. We know that the customer want to transfer 810 kilowatts. But we know that the voltage in this point can be as low as 350 volts. So to calculate the current in the absolutely worst scenario, we need to calculate at a voltage of 350 volts, which will be a higher current on the AC side. The power in AC is the square of 3 multiplied with the voltage, current and the cosinus phi. Turn it upside down and the current, that is the dimensioning of the drive, will be the power divided by the square of 3 voltage cosinus phi. And in this case we will see that you end up in a drive carrying 1572 amperes. When you start asking the customer about the battery, and especially the battery vendor, then there might be some limitations in current when the voltage is in the max and minimum of the state of charge. So they have to do some kind of compromise. And uh, a good compromise here would be to reduce the power demand a little bit so that it fits into our product catalog. I would uh, like to use a FI13 on this drive. And a FI13, that should be the 1450 ampere drive. And when it's used for grid converter, it is rated down a little bit because of the switching frequency and used as a power conversion. Then the down rating should be from 1450 ampere to 1300 ampere. In our uh, catalog, we will find some kind of drive. Already now, I have advised my customer to go for a air cool drive so let's see if something here would fit the task 1572 we look into the drives for 500 volts and we find that the fr13 is suitable here is one nice 1450 amps d-rated for grid converter it's 1300 amperes Okay, I could upgrade to the big frame 14 and then I have 1770 amperes down rated to about 1500. This is a really worst case scenario calculation. And in this case, a frame 13 is fit for the task. So we decide for the frame 13, the drive that is 1450 ampere. One other very nice thing I can see here is that the short circuit performance is extremely good. It is makes it fantastic for blowing fuses and we will come back to that in the next training course for the current cutter and the selectivity. But this is also an important number for us that is the capability of blowing fuses with the current cutter. Impedance in the secondary part of the transformer should be 4%, so it creates a nice sinus filter. That is one thing. How many kilovolt ampere? I have agreed with the customer to buy the frame 13 drive, which is a 1300 ampere drive. I also told them that in the price list you should add 20% for the license fee for grid converter. Okay, 1300 ampere as grid converter. The transformer need to 
handle the current of 1300 ampere on the 350 volt which the calculation is the square of 3 multiplied with the voltage and current. We have a requirement for kilovolt ampere 788 kilovolt ampere. That is a minimum so it doesn't hurt if they buy slightly bigger but that is the absolutely minimum for this plant. I don't want to use my frequency converter and transformer capacity to handle too much reactive current. I don't get paid for reactive current and neither does the customer. So let's minimize it. How to do that? What is reactive current? Reactive current in the system occurs when I miss the grid voltage. Let's see the drive give too little voltage. There is a gap between what I provide from here at this point and what actually the ship or city grid is. And this voltage difference will drive a current through. And all the iron in my transformer have to carry this, my IGBTs in the drive have to carry this and I don't get paid for it. So let's minimize it. And the answer is quite easy. That is to hit spot on the voltage, because if the voltage is 100%, the current for the reactive will be down to about 2% when everything is correct. And we can live with that. How to do it? We install a small transformer at this point where we measure the voltage precisely and also the frequency on the grid. And remember, this is before we have all the losses from our filters. So this is something that our software use to calculate the correct voltage that have to be produced here to hit exactly the correct voltage to the grid. And when it do this precisely, the reactive current will be as little as possible. There is a PID regulator in the grid converter, which regulate the voltage on this point so the voltage losses in our filters are continuously compensated so that we hit spot on the voltage on the ship or city grid. And this is the way that we reduce the uh, reactive currents to a minimum. Remember that uh, in the drive you have to install the option board, the D7 board, and this can only be installed in slot C, which is the high speed measurement slot. The customer shopping list will then be a drive frame 13, 1300 ampere plus the 20% license, the optional board D7 and the transformer should be 690, 350, 800 kilowatt ampere and a sinus filter which goes to this drive which is a 1450 ampere sinus filter. That should be about what you need to make this drive. Thank you for watching.